What's up everyone, Thrawn's Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick and I have an album review for you. So another one that came out on the 18th of March and one I definitely had my eye on was the newest offering from Dark Funeral, We Are the Apocalypse. Again, this comes out on the 18th of March on Century Media Records. This band formed in 1993 in Stockholm, Sweden. This is their seventh full length album and their first in six years. And well, a uh, bit of a confession here, I don't own any Dark Funeral, and honestly, this is the first time I've sat down and listened to a Dark Funeral album, like, ever. I've had, you know, individual tracks on samplers before, I've jammed them, I liked them, I just never got them. So, this was kind of a first experience for me, just to actually sit down and listen to a Dark Funeral album, and it's fucking black metal. It's pretty much exactly what I expected, just judging by the look of the band, which... Yeah, they look like a black metal band. They got the leather armor, the coarse paint, and yeah, I mean, it, it's black metal. And I figured, why not start with a new album? You know, I can work my way back if I really enjoy this. And uh, I mean, I like black metal, so, you know, that's kind of got its foot in the door already. And right away with the opening track, Nightfall, it's fucking black metal. I like the fact that they just skip over any sort of creepy ambiance or anything like that. Like, even in the beginning of the track, it just goes right to it and you're greeted to cold tremolo riffs, blast beats, fucking gnarly vocals, which I really dig the vocals on here. I think the frontman has an excellent delivery. He's very well enunciated. You can understand everything he says and all the cold, black, death, darkness, devil, whatever the fuck it is. It's really cool. And his delivery just kind of adds an air of creepiness to it. There's not a lot of reverb on his vocals either. They're very straightforward and just out in front of the mix. And they add a real sinister feel to what I would say is very melodic black metal. This kind of lays on big tremolo melodies, harmonies, and kind of builds this cold atmosphere. Like there are big riffy moments in here, but the bulk of it kind of lays on the tremolo stuff. And driven by absolutely insane drum work on here, Yane Yomala, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, or it isn't, I probably fucked it up. He actually drums for Aeon and Nightcrown, which I believe Nightcrown just put out an EP not too long ago too. Actually, it might have been this week. There was a lot of stuff that came out this week. But his drum style is absolutely furious on here. This is just breakneck speed almost at all times, even in the slower, more groovy pockets. He is laying on that double bass and just fucking going to town. Now, as I said, this pretty much holds on to kind of exactly what you expect out of black metal, at least for stuff that is kind of close to the second wave style. A lot of tremolo riffs, in fact the bulk of this is just sort of built on that and blast beats and just sort of cold jury atmosphere. Not a lot of synths or anything extra in it, you know, and the production on here is pretty modern, like pretty well polished. I would say maybe the guitars could come up a little bit because sometimes they kind of get lost in the drone in the background, but overall it sounds good. Songs like When Our Vengeance Is Done and the title track have all the black metal aggression you can need, pretty much Marduk levels of speed with dissection levels of atmospheric melody and like guitar work. Though I have to say the guitar work kind of does hold on to that tried and true formula of black metal with just tremolo melodies and harmonies. Maybe add a folky lead on top of that or maybe just something extra creepy and atmospheric. It does that a lot, but it does do it well. And that sort of thing is present on almost every song, but sometimes there's like an added bit of energy to it, namely the title track. It comes off much more sinister and dark and aggressive. The melodies don't sound as, well, tuneful to people who like black metal. To anyone else, it sounds like demons shrieking in a cavern and playing guitars, I guess. But to me, very tuneful, very melodic. This song, way more aggressive, a little bit more snarl on guitars, especially the opening riff to it, and there are some really nasty riffy breakdowns on there. And if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that I'm a sucker for riffs, and riffy black metal is some of my favorite black metal. It was nice to see that kind of broken up a little bit on here. Again, the title track, riffy breakdowns. It was nice to break out of the static blast for just a little bit, just to kind of bang your head and embrace the evil at a slower pace. And honestly, the song on here that does that the best in terms of slowing down the tempo and just kind of riffing out is Let the Devil In, which I believe was a single of theirs. And this has probably the catchiest riff on the entire album, and it is kind of built on that riff. I don't even think this really breaks into blast beats. It kind of stays more in a mid-tempo sort of 
you know, just kind of groove like a little bit of a dark march sound. There's some really cool tribal drums that lead into it. And once you hear like the main riff with its cool dissonant tag, like it's an instant hook. And I really like how that song just kind of sticks with that. And honestly, it comes off as creating a very unique hook on this album because when it comes down to hooks on this album, it kind of gets a little repetitive. There's a lot of formula on here, though the formula is sound, it kind of gets static at some points. Songs like A Beast of Praise, Beyond the Grave, and Nosferatu don't sound that different from one another. They kind of stick with the same formula. Again, tremolo riffs, tremolo harmonies, epic or folky or creepy lead melody on top. And that is kind of the main thing while the singer just spews forth all sorts of dark and twisted shit. And unfortunately, it kind of gets old after a while. Like, there isn't enough variation, like a unique melody that pops up, a strange breakdown, a atmospheric section. They kind of just stick to the formula so rigidly that it could almost be one long song if you combine those together. And sometimes it just feels kind of lackadaisical. The song, When I'm Gone, which when I read that title, I was like, man, that is one of the least black metal titles I've ever seen on a black metal album. That sounds like something you would see on a Stained or Nickelback album in terms of a song title, or maybe just a fucking country album with some dude in a fucking cowboy hat next to a tractor trailer. I don't know, I fucking hate country. It's just generic. And mind you, they already have a song called Nosferatu, which I'm recently sure like every dark spooky band has sung about Nosferatu before. But this song, it's supposed to be the slower, more brooding kind of doomy song on here. And unfortunately, the guitars on it just feel boring. Like it's just kind of lackadaisical. They're just kind of there to create some atmosphere. There's not really much of a melody to it. And it gets off to kind of a slow start. Like it has some creepy whispers in the beginning that, you know, kind of make it spooky. But it really just doesn't build very well. Like towards the end, it gets a bit better, but I've already gone through so much song where it was just like, man, I really hope this is building towards something. And while it kind of does, I mean, the payoff's not really that great. And this is in the middle of the album and it's the longest track though. It isn't like over six minutes. It still feels like it's over six minutes, maybe over seven. It just takes a while to get going. And when you get down to a song like Leviathan, that pretty much seems like a sampler platter of everything they're doing on here. It has the slower start with clean guitars, there's like a little bit of synths in the background, I think, but they're like way in the back, just to the point where you really have to listen for them. And that gets a nice creepy mid-tempo start before going into blast beats, and it even has like a clever breakdown in it. And this was something that was kind of missing on a lot of these songs were like dynamics. There weren't a lot of like memorable shifts in terms of like, you know, changing the tempo, changing the atmosphere, fucking playing a non-tremolo riff. There really wasn't enough of that to really keep my interest, especially towards the middle of the album. This album could use some more like legit heavy riffs to break up the tremolo because they have all the tremolo I could ever fucking want on here. And one of the other issues I had is, man, there's a lot of spoken word on here. Like, a little bit too much. It seems like every other song, there's a brief spoken word section it was like, man, why? I, I don't want to hear the blackened poetry narration all the time. Like maybe one song where you kind of lead in with that sort of build the mood and tell a story. But when you're doing it like every other track, which it kind of seemed like it was like every other track where there was like a brief spoken word, it got to be a bit much, especially when the vocals themselves, the fucking blackened screams are really good. I just want to get right back to those. So for me, this album was kind of a mixed bag. Like I found a lot of stuff that I like about black metal in general on here, especially the riffier moments, which again, sucker for riffs, but it kind of laid on one gear too much. Like to the point where they were grinding them into fucking dust. Honestly, I think some of this could have been broken up by like pacing, like moving around some of the songs because towards the middle, it kind of dragged, especially when it got to When I'm Gone. If they had Let the Devil In somewhere in the middle instead of that being the second track on here, I think that would have broken it up a little bit more. It's just, you had too many just blast beat ridden, tremolo riff driven songs that didn't really explore a lot of different tremolo riffs like they kind of all felt the same and that the guitars being in the back I don't know it just 
didn't necessarily work. Like, sure, the atmosphere is there, but the melodies and the hooks kind of aren't on some of these. Now, again, this is the first Dark Funeral album I have ever sat down and listened to in its entirety. So I don't have anything to compare it to in terms of their past work, so I don't know how to compare it to any of the past work. So this is kind of on its own for me and kind of a raw first listen, but overall, I'm gonna give us three stars. I do like it. It just kind of gets static. It kind of stays in one gear a little bit too long, and of course that gear is tremolo driven. I like that shit, it's just you need to break it up a little bit more for to hold my interest, and that's just me. Like I said, I'm a fucking sucker for riffs, and there are really good riffs on here. I especially like Let the Devil In, I think that is an awesome song, I think the title track's a banger too. And When Our Vengeance Is Done is particularly fucking hostile and brooding as well as the title track. So there are some really solid songs, but surprisingly this album can drag, and that's kind of surprising that, you know, something can drag that is completely loaded with hyper-aggressive blast beats all over the place. It did get a little too safe and formulaic for me. But I still urge you to check this out if you're a fan of Dark Funeral. Uh, I don't know how this compares to other albums, but I liked it. I like black metal. This sounds like black metal. They look like a black metal band. You know, they play black metal stuff. It sounds good. So yeah, give it a chance. And if you are not familiar with this band, uh, I don't know if this is a good place to start off at because, again, I haven't listened to the other albums, but if you like black metal in general, I think you'd probably dig this too. So yeah, check this one out. So if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon. There'll be a link down below if you would like to help us out on that. We do have t-shirts available at thrallsofmetal.com. Just click on that link that is also down below and that'll direct you to where you can get a shirt if you'd like one. And we're still waiting for Larry to get a hold of us. Um, hopefully we don't have to do another drawing because I don't want to do that because he did win at fair and square and we want to give him his shit. So Larry, if you were watching, hit us up at thrallsofmetal at gmail.com. Send us an email, put in big letters in the fucking caption that, hey, dickheads, you got my stuff, I want it. Can I have it please? And we'll get back to you. And Maybe you wonder why you called us dickheads. Actually, no, we probably won't wonder why you called us dickheads. But yeah, get a hold of us. We're still holding on to all your stuff, man. And so with that, I'd like to thank every last one of you once again because thank you. You got us to 10,000 and beyond, and we're going to keep growing this thing, and it is all due to you. So thank you all very much once again, and we will catch you later.